So let's try to generalize reduction. Um, as we've seen, we saw three examples of functions that are not tail recursive, um, but they, they share this very common, or they share this very um, structure, right? We ha it has the same pattern of code going on. Um, so if you look, basically what you have is in map, in filter, and in append, you have a function that has that is going over a list, uh, ranging over all the elements of the list. So it's going to have the base case is going to have a recursive step, and then what it has is also some um, always something operating on the first element of the list, and then something operating on the result of the recursive call. Uh, so in this case, cons is capturing uh, these two things. So on the left hand side, it captures the first element of the list, and then whatever was constructed from the result of the recursive call, right? And here as well, here we do the same thing. So in this case, we have a conditional, right? And then we have a way to combine the first and the, the recursive call. So here we're combining with by creating a pair. And here we're uh, combining by either creating a pair or skipping the first element, but we still need to access the two uh, things w uh, where the first thing is first and the second thing is the the recursive step um, again the n, n plus one right so how do we build n plus one we need always the first element and the recursive call of um, the rest uh, and in, in all these three instances we see the same pattern over and over so now the question becomes okay so how do we um, how do we do this um, transformation for instance for tailed call recursive um, ideally, you know, this is this is complicated, as we you saw in in uh, two lessons ago. It's not very obvious how you convert from not tail recursive to tail recursive when the function has this shape. So we have programming languages to save uh, as well, t or higher level programming languages exactly to save uh, typing. It's it's really for the comfort of the the programmer. That's one of the main reasons why you want to use a higher level programming language. So can uh, racket or in this case, functional programming really help us in trying to generalize such a pattern? And the answer is of course, yes. And that's what we're learning here. So um, the, the pattern that we learn is that, oh, maybe we have like this recursive, I even wrote it as a pattern. It was not real code, but basically we said that we have, um, Whenever we have a recursion, a recursive call to some value L, what we can do is we have these, this, this general structure, right? Where you have the base case, and then you have some step function that takes the first element and the recursive call of the rest, right? And, and here are two instances, right? Where, for instance, sorry, here is one instance where um, if we take uh, cons of, um, we take cons of, um, F of, so the, the recursive step of map is, if we look at this general pattern, it becomes, you know, it's related to this step uh, function, right? So cons is step, uh, and we're providing the two, we need to, so this, this general step function takes two things, and of course that's why cons is taking these two things, right? The, the first and the map of rest. Okay, so I hope you you realize, so one, one good example for now, maybe pause the video and try to match what is step for each one. So what is, how, how does step match here and how does step match here in example two and try to see the base case, how they change. So the, the, the base case is not just always retaining empty as you can see from here. So you can do something else, but you do need to access, um, the base case, right? The base case, you know, that always takes empty as as the, the step case takes first. Okay. So uh, what we were going to do is we're going to create this function called fold right. And fold right is the one that is going to capture this result. And as you can see, it takes basically the same thing. So let, let me try to write this code. So I'm going to write the recursive pattern. And I'm going to write it right below append. Okay, so if I want to write a, um, 
the generalized version of append, what do I do? I take this recursive call and I have a, an empty, okay? So I do something in the base case, right? But I know that the base case is always going to be, um, it's going to be something that takes empty. So because empty is a constant, I don't really need to pass it, right? So, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is make this one of the parameters so that when uh, rec hits empty, it just returns base case. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Let me just, I'm, I'm just making sure that the function, okay, so then take step. Okay, so the next thing we, we want to do is we want to parameterize this code. How do we parameterize this code? Well, if we always take the first and the recursive call, let's just make instead of cons, let's make it so that it's a function. Right, so what we can do is we take a function step. Step takes the first element, right? And then in the recursive step, we just need to pass base case and the rest of the list, okay? So let me see now, how would I define my append v2? Okay, so v2 takes in a left and a right. And the way I would generalize it is, so I'm just generalizing this behavior. Okay, so what is my base case? My base case is right. Right, base case returns right. So step is gonna be something and base case is gonna be right. And uh, the list we're ranging over is gonna be left, right? Okay, so what is the function step? Okay, so what does step take? Step takes the first element, so this will be the first, let's call it head, and um, then it takes the recursive call, so let's call this the new, uh, new list. Head of list, okay. So what do we do? Well, it has to be cons, right? Where we take cons of the first and uh, append. So in this case, step just calls cons, head of list and new list, right? So here we can call step. Okay, so let's see if um, it does what it's supposed to do, append v2. Notice that now append v2 is no longer recursive. So now I do, I do one, two, this three, four, see if this works. Yay, got one, two, three, four. Okay. So generalizing is not that complicated, right? The only thing we did was we identified that this is really a general pattern. So if this is a, a general pattern that we saw appearing over and over, Let's just create a function that does that, right? So why would you want to do that actually? Well, we could do it in this class just because we want to learn how to generalize things. So we want to, to I want to teach you how to look at code and try to improve it or generalize it, which might be good, but it also might be more complicated, right? Now, if you don't understand what rec does, you look at append, it's more complicated to understand, right? But if you think about it, if, the, the pattern does arise multiple times. That means that now, if, if in your code base you will see this pattern happening over and over, then it does justify being generalized over because it means you understand this base pattern and you just see, oh, actually a pen is just doing this small thing. So it's very clear what is uh, different from, you know, between a pen and map and a filter, right? You really, um, distilled some common behavior and separated uh, and encapsulated. And that is a good thing because now if you understand that uh, common behavior, you kind of already understood 80% of what's going on. You kind of understood what 80% of the implementation of map, of filter, and of append, right? You don't have to try to understand, oh, is this correct? Is this correct? Right? Imagine you are grading uh, students' homework assignments. If you, if the student is calling rec and you know how rec is implemented, 
this is much easier to analyze, right? To understand if it's correct or not. Okay. So another thing you might uh, realize is, well, if I'm calling cons here and step is just passing the arguments in the same order, maybe I can just call cons directly. And that does work, right? Um, so I just generalized the code a bit or, or simplified, refactored so that it's a bit cleaner. Uh, the step function is, is just cons in this case, and the base case is right. Okay, so actually this function is not called rec, it's called fold right. And this is known as a, as a function uh, this pattern is known as reduction, okay? And then the reason it's being folded right um, is because there are two versions, as we will learn uh, in, in the next few slides. There's also a left version, right? Which just says how, where is the step performed? Is it before or after? We'll, we'll, that will become obvious once I introduce fold, fold left. But for now, for the sake of... Um, adhering to the standard library of records conventions that is how um, this form of reduction is called in the standard library of record so that's why we use the same name okay so this is folding right uh, so it's it's a form of reduction and okay we we've learned how to implement it we've learned that it's not that different from append that we can simplify the the implementation of append um, as an exercise, I think it would be interesting to maybe pause this video and try to do the same for filter and uh, map. Try to implement it using um, using fold right. I think that would be a very good exercise. Because if you don't pause the video, I'm going to continue. I'm going to show you the solution. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so we learned this, how to implement the fold right reduction. Um, and now I'm going to start giving the solutions, which is, okay, so how do we implement map with folder with fold right? Uh, so map uh, has base case, you return empty. And then what you do is you apply cons to F. Okay, so what your step function is going to do It's very simple. It does a cons where it applies F to the left hand side and right hand side is the new list. Okay, so next for append, append we saw, append is very simple. Finally filter, filter also becomes simple. You take the element, you take the list and then you had a, a, an if condition. So if you wanna keep the element, we do a cons, otherwise we just return the new list, right? So if we understand fold, now it becomes much simpler to understand how to implement a filter. In the homework assignment, I ask you guys to uh, implement functions in a tail recursive way. One very easy way of doing that is by calling fold right. Why? Because, well, we can, uh, if we implement fold right as a tail recursive option, which is what we're, I'm going to show you next. Uh, now your filter becomes still recursive and that's a really cool thing it means that if you generalize this common pattern and then you optimize this general pattern then everything that is built on this general pattern is benefits from it and in this case not just in understanding and encapsulating behavior but also in performance okay let's just summarize what we have so far so we saw we had all this code and we kind of cleaned it up it became just this where we made common, uh, we abstracted the common behavior in this function called fold right. Uh, and now we just have the, the difference in terms of implementation, understanding the implementation becomes much simpler as assuming you understand what fold right is doing. Um, less code to maintain, which is always a good thing. So now uh, in the next video, I'm gonna do the other direction. So I'm gonna introduce fold left. And what does that mean?